Hi, I'm Richard, and I'm going to show you how to take gift card payments using Web Payments SDK. You want to be sure that you already have a Square Developer account. We're going to cover how to set up Web Payments SDK to securely capture the gift card number, and then we'll show how to process that gift card using Payments API. We'll also cover some extra considerations that you need to account for when handling gift card payments. Let's get started with setting up Web Payments SDK. Here we have the Web Payments Quick Start. If this is your first time working with this example, be sure to copy the .env.example file and rename that copy to .env.sandbox, and then put your sandbox access token in here under the square access token variable. Now we can start the app by running npm run dev in our terminal. Let's open up our browser to localhost port 3000. We'll want to follow the link for gift card payments. We see an error saying we haven't set our application ID or location ID, so let's go set those. The file we're looking for is in the public folder under examples and is called giftcard.html. Great. We see our app ID and location ID variables, so let's set those. You can find your app ID in the developer portal for your application under credentials and your location ID under locations in there as well. Now let's save and reload the page. Awesome. We have a gift card field and credit card fields loading now. Let's enter a test gift card number here and click pay. You can find the sandbox test value under sandbox test values in our documentation. Success. Now let's take a look at how this form works. Let's skip past these helper functions for now and go straight to the DOM content loaded event listener. Here, we're just initializing Web Payments SDK by passing in our app ID and location ID to square.payments and assigning that to the payments variable. Then, just below, we're initializing the gift card form. We can take a peek at the initialize gift card function and see that it is calling a wait on payments.giftcard, and then calling attach while passing in the ID of the element that we want to replace with our gift card form. Next, we have our function for handling a payment submission. Inside of that function, we call the tokenize function, which if we take a peek, just calls tokenize on the payment method that is passed in and returns that token if the tokenization was successful. The last part of handling a payment submission is that we call the create payment function by passing in our token. Taking a peek at this function, we see that it just makes a fetch request by passing our token and location ID to the slash payment endpoint of our application. Finally, we just have some event listeners tied to buttons that will trigger the handle payment submission function when clicked. So we've covered how to set up Web Payments SDK for creating a gift card form, tokenizing a customer's gift card, and sending it to your backend to process a payment. Let's go over some special considerations you need to account for when taking a gift card payment. It's pretty common that when a customer wants to pay with a gift card, that it won't be the only payment being used for the order. Also, you, and sometimes even the customer, might not know how much is available on the gift card. So let's cover some options in Payments API and Orders API that you can use for handling this. First, we'll create an order here and a single line item for $100. Great, we'll just hold on to this order ID to reference later when we create our payments. Now let's go to the Create Payment endpoint to create a gift card payment. I'm going to set the amount here to 10,000 for $100. Then I'm going to set accept partial authorization to true. This allows us to request a payment for up to our specified amount. So if the gift card has less than $100 on it, the create payment endpoint will return how much we're allowed to charge using this gift card. Now, because we're using accept partial authorization, we also want to be sure that we do not autocomplete the payment. So we want to set autocomplete to false. This is also sometimes referred to as delayed capture. Before we set the source ID, let's go put in the order ID from the order we created earlier. Great. Now for the source ID, I'm just going to put in a gift card ID from my account that I know has less than $100 on it. Just remember, the source ID field is the same field you'll put the token you got from Web Payments SDK. I just happen to be using a gift card ID instead. Now let's run the request. Awesome, our request was successful, so let's take a closer look at what we got back. We can see that even though we set the amount money to 10,000 in our original request, it returned back 500. We also see that the status is approved. This means that the $5 for the gift card are being held to be used, but that we haven't fully captured the payment yet. From here, you can either call the complete payment endpoint to capture the payment, or you can call the cancel payment endpoint, which will void the payment. 
So now we know how to create a gift card payment using the Accept Partial Authorization option. We just need to complete our order by getting another payment to cover the rest of the cost of our order. Let's create one more payment for 9,500 to cover the rest of the cost of our order. I'll just use the test values here, but I won't set Accept Partial Authorization. I will, however, set Autocomplete to False so that we can do a delayed capture here. This is a good practice to follow since we have multiple payments for this order. We don't want to complete any payments until we know that we have enough to cover the entire cost of our order. Now that our payments cover the total cost of the order, we can use the Pay Order Endpoint of the Orders API to complete them both at the same time. First, let's retrieve our order and we can find our payments under Tenders. I'll just copy these payment IDs. Now we can go to the Pay Order Endpoint. We just need to put in our order ID, generate an item potency key, and then provide the payment IDs that we got from earlier. Let's go ahead and run that. Great, we see that the state of our order is completed, and if we scroll down, we can see our payments now have a status of captured. That covers handling gift card payments with Web Payments SDK. You want to remember that when you're handling a gift card payment, that you want to use Accept Partial Authorization and Delayed Capture options since the gift card might not have the amount that you're trying to charge available. Be sure to check out our documentation to learn more about supporting gift cards with Web Payments SDK. Thanks for watching and happy coding.